Hey everybody, it's Queen of Light 1111. I hope you guys are doing well. Happy Monday. I am here with your Monday check-in. Happy August. It is August 2nd. And I will tell you, many of us uh, light workers and readers have been um, channeling movement during this month. And I will tell you, if there is a card in the tarot that signifies union, that is the chariot, or not union, oh my God, movement to union, I guess, right? It's the chariot. The chariot is all about charging ahead. The chariot card is all about balance. It's about mastery and it's about moving forward. We have the chariot card in this spread. One, two, three, four times four times. It has come up for the Divine Feminine. It has come up for the Divine Masculine. It has come up in Divine Masculine's spread here as a card, and then it's come up as the bottom of the deck for guidance. So this is a very interesting reading. We have a lot of completion energy here. We have a lot of movement energy here, and then we have guidance that we're going to close up with. So quick announcement that I want to make. A lot of you have said, hey, Queen of Light, do you have another option for membership? I understand it is challenging times for a lot of you, and I am so grateful and have tons of gratitude for those of you who are, you know, who have booked services with me and who have, um, who have been members since the start of my membership. But what I've done for a lot of you who are still experiencing some challenges is I added a another level of membership, okay? And it's called level A. So today I have level one and I have level two. I've added level A. Level A is um, the baseline membership where you get three extra readings per month, okay? Special readings that I design and create just for you as a member. Um, and level A gets three readings, okay, per month, in addition to the collective videos that I do for YouTube that are for free. The level one membership, you get six readings. So you get the three from level A and then a bonus three for level one. And then level two members get level A benefits, level one benefits, and they get an extra three readings. Those three readings are very special. I have seen so many people upgrade to level two over the course of the year because those readings that I do are not ones that you're necessarily going to find on YouTube um, or you're going to get real-time information about what's happening, whether through the new moon, the full moon, any eclipses, um, anything that I may have even dreamt about that I'm channeling for the collective, those are especially reserved for level two, okay? So if you are interested, um, for those of you who have reached out and said, hey, do you have, you know, another option, um, level A could certainly be a uh, potential fit for you. I'm going to start August membership readings tomorrow. So get ready because, oh my God, the energies are on fire. If you want to book your own personal reading, coaching session, or healing session, go to queenalight1111.com. Let's get started with these most significant overall energy for divine masculine and feminine as related to each other. Bottom of the deck is compatibility. Clarified by the Knight of Wands. Clarified by community. Okay, here's what I'm getting. Oh, my little Buddha. Okay, so here's what I'm getting. Compatibility, Knight of Wands, and community. So when the compatibility com card comes out, this has a lot to do with the energy of, you know, do we have the same sort of belief systems? Do we have this synergy um, of, of being able to be in a healthy connection, creating a strong foundation. So when this card comes out, they want you, to, Spirit wants you to understand that a great relationship is all about compatibility. So maybe in the past, one or both of you were trying to improve or change something about your, your, your twin or even about yourself, okay, in order to be in the connection. But this is about true authenticity, 
okay? This is a, not changing because you want to be in the connection, but changing because it's the best thing for you. It's for your growth. And a healthy relationship is going to demand that you are honest about yourself and your true priorities, okay? Not that you're changing yourself because you want to be in union, changing yourself because this is what the community says, changing yourself because that's what your twin wants or vice versa. So we're really thinking about compatibility and how we move forward in love towards um, towards each other, okay? So now let's take a look at what the most significant energy is for divine masculine and divine feminine as related to each other. So they're thinking a lot about, you know, are we compatible? You know, I don't want to change my feminine. I don't want to change my masculine. They're going to have to change on their own if they feel that they need to change, okay? Okay. So Divine Feminine's bottom of the deck is this energy of maturity. I love this for her. I love this for her. Her most significant overall energy towards Divine Masculine is maturity. She's in this energy where she is seeing that she is responsible for her own happiness. Masculine is responsible for his own happiness. And in order to experience real love, not false versions, both, both <laughs> must be in their energy of maturity. It is clarified by the King of Wands and the Privileged Lady. These are two cards that show me, hey, I am who I am. That compatibility card, she wants masculine to be in his energy of a leader, to be in this energy of his own personal truth, to be in this energy of a visionary to be in his energy of his authenticity. And she is too, privileged lady. She's like, I understand all the blessings that I have. I understand that it is a privilege to be on this journey, that I have, that she has gratitude to be on this journey. She's not a feminine that's like, oh my God, I wish I didn't choose this journey, blah, blah, blah. And trust me, I've seen those comments and I'm like, wow, you really missed the point. You really missed the point because this journey is not about union. This journey is about you coming into your true authenticity, into your healing, into your union. And it is a privilege to be on this journey, on this spiritual journey. Call it whatever you want to call it by label. But just to be alive today in this body, to have these experiences and to change your lens of thinking from a place of maturity is a privilege, is a privilege. So when divine feminine is in her most significant overall energy towards divine masculine, she sees maturity in her masculine. She sees maturity in herself and is all about being in your most honest, authentic, true self for union of self, for outer union to manifest. Divine Masculine's most significant energy is commitment. So he is maturing just like Divine Feminine feels and um, connects to when she is connecting with him. Commitment. This is all about a unshakable secure, loving relationship. When he is in his most significant energy towards divine feminine, he is in this energy of committing to himself first and foremost, being a compatible partner to himself, and then to be in a relationship where he can commit to divine feminine. It's imperative that he commits to himself first, and then he can commit or recommit to divine feminine from a place of newness. This is confirmed or clarified rather by the world card and unexpected income. So this is an energy of he wants to complete this commitment. He wants to successfully victory wreath, complete this journey. This is the last card in the tarot deck, in the major arcanas. This is all about this stability and security, fire and passion. This is all about the energy of knowledge and wisdom. This is all about the energy of, um, what was, what am I missing? So I got earth, air, I'm sorry, earth, fire, water. This is all about mastering emotions. That brings the completion to a commitment of the Twin Flames. This is what he wants. And this unexpected income card, you know, this is an energy where, you know, he doesn't want things to be sudden anymore. This is an energy of preparing. This is an energy where he's also in this energy of, you know, this improvement, this change. 
has occurred within him and in this place of compatibility because of like-minded individuals. He has been on this journey working with other people, working with divine feminine to come to this place of commitment to himself, to commit to feminine, to complete this. And this journey was very much unexpected for him. Like for all of us, right? Totally unexpected. But it's a great surprise. So he's in this energy of, you know, I want to come in and I want to perhaps unexpectedly offer this commitment. You might not even see it coming. So what is the bottom of the deck for divine feminine's head, heart, and environment? Well, the card that they share, here's another card of completion, the world card. Where do we just get the world card? Right here. And divine masculine's energy. So for divine feminine, how does this manifest? Head, heart, and environment. Well, she has successfully completed the divine feminine energy. This is the empress card. She has completed nurturing herself, nurturing her journey. She's in this energy of mastery because it's further clarified by the chariot. And then that's further clarified by the six of pentacles and then the cross. So here's what I'm getting. The world card. Okay, so the world card in this deck is all about expansion. Oops, sorry. Right? So this deck, and look, it's a number 29. Can't make that up. It's an energy of expansion. It's an energy of opening up. Okay, this is also this energy of expanding vision, expanding knowledge, having broader perspective. There's not just this one laser focused idea anymore. She realizes that things are unlimited to her through this connection. The world is her oyster. So now what is the storyline for Divine Feminine? She's opening up. She is expanding as divine feminine, to move forward in mastery in a place of balance towards her destiny. That's what she's doing here. That is what she's doing. She is in the energy where she's just not laser focused on divine masculine. She's just not laser focused on union. Her most significant head, heart environment as her journey as related to masculine is she has opened up to be divine feminine. She has come into this place of mastery to have balance in her connection with masculine because she has balance in herself. It was a necessity. It was a huge cross to bear. But now she has mastered this and she is ready for, to move forward with masculine on this journey from a place of power. Okay. So now let's look at Divine Masculine's bottom of the deck. So understanding that he also has the world card, this expansion, okay? This opening up, what is his energy? Three of Pentacles, recognition and reward. This is the energy for Divine Masculine that he has worked very hard to open himself up. He has worked very hard to expand his consciousness, and that energy, he's opened up his consciousness. And now he's in this place of, I worked really hard, man. Growth and development. I learned some karmic lessons here. And I have completed world card. Again, one, two, three times we got the world card now. And he has completed his mastery chariot card again to move forward with communication. To move to forward to talk. Okay, Knight of Air. So divine masculine's overall energy is he has really opened himself up. He's worked very hard on karmic lessons that he has completed. And now he's ready to move forward towards communication. We can't make that up. Okay, now let's get into the energies. Chariot card, do you see? Did you guys see how they both had the chariot card? Divine feminine and divine masculine both have the chariot. That is is mastery. That's that two horses have to be in balance in order to pull the chariot forward. They are in balance. So now, what is Divine Feminine's most significant thought when she thinks of masculine? So she is in the energy of personal healing and happiness, okay? She's worked very, very hard to get to this place of maturity. She has very worked very, very hard to come into this place of mastery and balance 
It's been a very, very big cross to bear, a heavy cross to bear, but now she is in her maturity. She is the empress, and that is because she's been very, very focused on healing. What about it? She's been healing two of cups. She's been healing her inner union and her outer union, and that union that was suddenly like taken apart, that's where she learned self-love and union of self. So when she thinks about her masculine from a place of healing, she's like, spirit, I understand this union had to fall apart for me to understand how to fill my own cup to become my own union. This is huge maturity for Divine Feminine. Huge, huge. And she understands this because of her healing. Now, divine masculine. What is divine masculine's most significant thought when he thinks of feminine? Garden at the gate. This is all about waiting. It's kind of waiting at the gate. Waiting at the gate, not yet prepared to blast through just yet. Okay? What about it? Garden at the gate, the devil card. Temptation. He's very tempted to rush forward. He's very tempted. Very tempted. But look at him. He's working on himself. He's working on these temptations. This is why he's not charging ahead like a Casanova, like someone who, re who reaches out or comes forward without being truly ready. He's at the gate in his place of maturity. He is tempted, but he's working on his cycles. And he is observing Page of Th Swords. He's like working on his restlessness. He's working on himself. He is observing whether or not he has developed. He's not going to come forward unless he's fully developed because he does not want to get into the same cycle of temptation and loss and separation again. What is Divine Feminine's most significant feeling when she feels for masculine bro broken heart? There's an energy of broken heart, but what's clarified by blossom. This is the judgment card. She has blossomed through her broken heart and she can only understand that through her personal healing. Her broken heart, she's showing how much she has blossomed. She, how much she has blossomed because of this love, this divine love. She is contemplating. She's thinking about how opportunities were missed, you know, because of all of these other cups. She's contemplating. She's in this energy of blossoming through missed opportunities, blossoming through her broken heart. She is turned her pain into power. And when she sees how they had potentially missed this spiritual connection, Hierophant card, how they perhaps missed this spiritual contract, she is in this energy of really working to make her own dreams real. So when she feels for masculine, it stems from this heartbreak that she has blossomed from. Okay? And now there's this contemplation of this connection where perhaps they worked against each other, okay? Perhaps there was this energy of repetition, but now through this broken heart, through this blossoming, she is in this energy of looking at this divine spiritual connection and she will persist forward. She will continue to move forward and have faith in the divine in that everything that happens is for her greatest good and the greatest good of her connection with masculine. Divine masculine's most significant feeling, look at him, solar plexus. This is telling me that August is on fire. Third chakra, Archangel Shamuel, solar plexus. This is the angel that helps him take action. For positive movement forward. This is the Eight of Pentacles energy, but if you don't know this deck, you would have thought it's Eight of Wands. But this is about him actively and very with confidence working on himself because he wants to move forward. He wants to move forward towards his wishes. His wish is a new beginning and King of Water. And look at this card chariot. Move forward from a place of emotional mastery. His most significant feeling towards Divine Feminine is 
I want to take action, move forward towards my wishes, have a new beginning from a place of mastery. You can't make that up. Chariot card again. That's the third time we've seen it. What is happening in Divine Feminine's environment as related to masculine deceit card? But guess what? Third eye chakra. She knows through her intuition. She sees where there's deception. She sees the reason for deception. She is the empress. Okay? She's in this energy where there was this deception of her logic, perhaps, or her intuition, perhaps, in the past where she may not have been in her power, but now temperance card and the clock. Here's the story. What is happening in divine feminine's environment as related to masculine? This deception, she sees it from a higher lens. And as she sees it from a higher lens, remember in her headspace, it helps her heal. It helps her heal and become the empress. And that's who she is as she balances and tempers out her lessons of the past. She comes into this energy and continues to show up as empress time and time again in her environment, in the bottom of her deck. She is divine feminine in sacred union with herself. She understands the deception. She understands the lessons. She understands why. And she understands it as if it was a blessing. It was a blessing because it helped her blossom. It helped her grow. It helped her come into union with herself. What about divine masculine's environment as related to feminine? Walking away. He's walking away from this defensiveness, from just standing his ground from a place of ego. He's walking away from defensiveness where he was just observing, right? He was restless. Remember, we already got the page of swords for him here in his headspace. Eight of pentacles, page of swords. He's working on that to develop, to not be in temptation, to just not rush forward. So he's walking away from this energy of just standing his ground and being restless, being quick and not thinking. And he is now in this energy of being much more self-aware. He's much more self-aware of where he gets caught up, where he gets tangled up, where he creates mess. So he's walking away from this energy of being stuck in the restless energy and he's looking at himself and he's looking at the problems from a higher consciousness. So now let's take a look at advice. Bottom of the deck. You can't, you can't make this up. Chariot card. The question was, what is divine masculine and feminine's advice from spirit about their journey? The chariot. Rewards that come from hard work, successfully balancing many priorities at once, determination and willpower, public recognition. The advice is, good job, masculine and feminine. All of this is a reward for your hard work that now you will move forward tangibly, visibly in the 3D. So divine feminine's advice is, look at this, nine of wands, protect what you have created, be prepared, never give up, ask your angels for help, environmental activism and animal rights. So this is the energy where you've worked really hard to come together in your sacred union of self. You've worked really hard to blossom. And now it's about being prepared for the next steps that you will take on your journey and on your journey with masculine. What is divine masculine's energy? Look at, they both have nines. Nine of pentacles. Enjoying the fruits of your labors. You can't make this up because here in his bottom of the deck, he got recognition and reward. So spirit is saying to him, enjoy the fruit of your labor. Hard work that has led to a luxurious life. Buying yourself something special. Happily and successfully self-employed. Enjoying your solitude. This is the time for him to say, yeah, I worked really hard. Because guess what? His wish is to come forward with that ace of pentacles with the chariot card and the chariot is at the bottom of the deck. So right now he's in this energy of, I worked really hard. Let me gel this in. I have a little bit more work to do on my restless mind and some of my temptations, but I am going to sit here for a moment 
and enjoy the fruits of my labor. I have worked very, very hard. And you all know I shuffle, but somewhere along the shuffling lines of these messages card, this card was just laying and I, it was literally camouflaged on my table. As you can see, it's kind of orangey and it was here and I didn't really see it. But guess what it is? Four of Wands. So much to celebrate. Send gratitude to the divine and the angels for the peace and prosperity coming to you. Peace and contentment in your personal life. I feel like this is a message for, for the connection. There will be so much to celebrate. Stand up for yourself. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. You're both on your own at this time. You're not giving up. You're working hard. You're moving forward. Oh, sorry, Buddha. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm so sorry. You're moving forward to this union. There will be so much, so much to celebrate. Four of Wands. This is not coincidence that this card came out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And again, don't forget, I have level A three videos. That's the baseline membership. If you guys are interested, join. And if you're interested in your own personal reading, coaching session, or healing session, to see if you're part of this collective, go to Queen of Light, 1111.com. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.